get started. Hospitals say they are seeing the very beginning of the surge of the COVID-19 cases to come. Colorado has a senator keeping his distance, self-quarantine after contact with a voter with coronavirus. We look at where the governor gets the power to shut down a big part of the economy and what he might do next. Navigating mass layoffs, never before seen numbers of people coming into the unemployment system at once. Keeping kids out of school occupied with social distancing driving our decisions. And you don't need to get that close to hear the sound of St. Patrick's Day in Colorado. All that is next. Landlocked Colorado is an odd place to talk about hurricanes, but they do give us a sense of what scientists say is coming from coronavirus. First, showers here and there, then isolated, intense storms, and then comes the surge. Healthcare workers who are bracing for that surge tell us that they have started feeling raindrops. Today, the State Hospital Association confirmed it. There is a clear increase in the number of respiratory illnesses that require people to come into the hospital. Now, it's nothing that they can't handle now, but they know that these are just the, the outer bands of the COVID-19 pandemic. Hurricanes are foreign to most Coloradans, but you've seen it all on TV. People boarding up, taking measures to protect those who live in the lowest lying areas because, like with this storm, we know who is going to be most at risk. Now, unlike a hurricane, the path and intensity of this coming storm, it can be shaped and shifted by our behavior and our choices. It's not too late to make the storm easier on our neighbors through social distancing, by having that tough conversation with your boss about working from home, and by realizing that it is only in the outer bands of the storm that we can still change its course. Colorado now has a senator in self-quarantine. Republican Senator Cory Gardner is keeping his distance from voters, staff, and pretty much everyone else because he came in contact with a constituent who later tested positive for coronavirus. Gardner says they met at his office in D.C. Gardner says at this point doesn't have any symptoms, continues to still work on coronavirus relief. President Trump wants all American workers to get a check from the federal government to get through lost work and income. Now, the White House says that amount should be significant. Colorado's Democratic Senator Michael Bennett thinks it should be precisely $4,500. Bennett's backing a Democratic proposal to pay that amount to all adults and children in the U.S. It would be paid out in three installments, the first being $2,000. The rest of the money would be sent out over the course of the year and only if the health emergency continues. Business owners are making thousands of heartbreaking layoffs across Colorado right now, and the state's unemployment insurance system is dealing with unprecedented numbers. Meanwhile, there's another form of currency that's going around. Here's Jeremy Hohola. It's strange, quiet places, an emptiness there. We'll probably make a decision in the next 24 to 48 hours on how to handle it. Likely a final goodbye here. All in it together, bitches. At the local 46 bar in the north side. We probably shouldn't have touched. I know. I know. <laughs> Naya Gingrich is sending her staff home with a bit of hope and some drinks and food. They won't come back for weeks as bars and restaurants shut down. All of our staff are waiting to find out from us what the best move for them all is. If hope is a currency, there's plenty of it here, perhaps at a time when it's needed the most. I'm just trying to be cool, calm and collected and, you know, we're all in it together and we will get through it. And I feel comfortable that our businesses will survive this. Colorado's Department of Labor reports nearly 7,000 people have filed for unemployment Tuesday morning. Many of them servers who've been told to go home. More will come asking for help. We think uh, in the tens of thousands of people will start applying for unemployment insurance. And I think, you know, people last night or today found out what their employment situation looks like if they're in the bar and restaurant entertainment business. Unprecedented numbers. The online system to process claims has been overwhelmed. We know we're going through some uncharted, unprecedented times. It's hopefully this is just a blip on the radar screen and this is some life lessons that are really testing all of us. Hopefully, the owner of the Blake Street Tavern has been trying to help the 80 people he laid off find other work. If hope is a currency, the pandemic hasn't bankrupted anybody here, even amid a massive long shutdown. I've got my two kids at home, but I've got my 80, 90 kids here. 
and uh, we're going to get through this. I mean, we're going to come back with a fury when this all ends. I'm trying to make sure and, uh, you know, assure our staff that they know they will have a home to come back to and a job to come back to. And I see us being busier than ever when we reopen after May. For next, I'm Jeremy Hohola. So here's one trick that the state gave us. If you're filing for unemployment online, remember to keep pressing the save and finish later button as you go along. That's going to help if the system crashes in the middle of your claim. It's also important to note you file when the wage loss happens. So if you're still getting paid for a week or two weeks or three weeks, don't file right away. You need to wait until you stop getting paid or else you could be denied. So this is day one in our era of takeout and delivery only, when small groups have become the new big gatherings. Some of you are asking what could come next. Our Marshall Zellinger looks at the power of state leaders and local health departments to dictate life in the name of safety. First, it was the six foot rule. Then schools shut down. The ski resorts closed and now no sit down restaurant service. The ski resorts were the work of an executive order by Governor Jared Polis. But take out only and the closing of gyms, theaters and casinos. That comes from this six page order from the director of the state health department. It's based on this state law that spells out what the Department of Public Health and Environment does. Its very first power is to close theaters, schools and other public places and to forbid gatherings of people when necessary to protect the public health. During a conference call today, I asked what it would take to enhance the closing to include shopping malls or salons. We're continuing to look at the social distancing measures that might be needed to protect our communities and having policy discussions about those. Nothing specific, but it's within their power to enhance the restrictions. Just like within cities, the Denver Department of Public Health issued this two-page order yesterday, even before the state did, restricting liquor stores and restaurants to carry out, drive through or delivery. This order also defines what a mass gathering is and is not. A mass gathering is not an airport or airport concessions, mass transit, shopping malls, child care, grocery stores, homeless shelters, religious gatherings, protests, jury duty, and legislative meetings. I told you what mass gathering is not. According to this, it is something that happens in an auditorium, stadium, arena, theaters, or large conference rooms. So if the mayor or if this were higher, the governor wanted to change or the public health departments wanted to change this in Denver, at least all you would have to do is cross out from what a mass gathering does not include and then write it up top in that first paragraph of what it does include. It's as simple as editing the document and you shut down another industry, essentially, Kyle. So the answer that I've been giving people, and Marshall, that was a much more fulsome answer, but you're a lot smarter than I am. When people ask me, how much power does the government have in this situation? The short answer is a lot. Whatever it thinks is going to prevent the spread of something that impacts our public health and safety. And that is very broad and they could create whatever paragraph they want to convince us that it is in our public safety, whatever they deem necessary. I've made it my mission to find something to smile and laugh at every day, and today it's going to be your tie. It's partially green, right? <laughs> I like I like it. It's nice. It's very festive. Thank you, Marshall. Appreciate my wife it. Gave it. Yeah, it's very nice. The teachers at Denver Jewish Day School had about two weeks to scramble and uh, uh, implement the online learning system that they were going to use with their students this week, and they say, you know. So far, so good. Students began remote classes today. The head of school says the administration started discussing switching to online classes about three weeks ago. And he told us he's really proud of how quickly the teachers and the students have been able to put these ideas into practice. Now, before going ahead with this, they made sure that every single family in the school had access to the internet. They also lent out some equipment to students who did not have a home computer. So everybody's on board now. Two more weeks of remote learning is what they know they're going to do. I think we're all expecting stuff like this could get well extended beyond spring breaks. In the case of that school, it's April 7th. Online learning began today for Chatfield Senior High School students, so the building is basically deserted, but not totally empty. That is band director Andy Michaud filling the halls of the empty Chatfield High with music on Monday. Apparently the acoustics are just right for bagpipes when there are no bodies from the student body around to dampen the sound. Our thanks to PE teacher Brett McGatlin for sending that to us. Not the only person to holler hey next when they heard the sound of bagpipes.
That fine gentleman in the Cherry Creek Vista neighborhood in Inglewood was out playing right across the street from an assisted living center. A woman named Christine sent us this video. She said you know, she's got Irish heritage and her family celebrates every year. Those plans obviously put on hold this year. She says that her neighbor has no idea how much that meant to her. Social distancing does not mean that you have to quit doing what you love. You just have to adjust. And I love to feature all the creative ways that people are staying in touch and continuing to do the things that matter most to them. Dance studios in Denver and Golden have moved their schedule to all online classes, trying to provide consistency in a way to stay connected to the kids. Got these pictures today of Penny, Addie, and Anna doing their dance routines at home. But really the goal is just to get outside, right, and get some fresh air and kind of get a little bit of normalcy in everything that we're going through right now. Neighbors in Aurora get their stir-crazy kids out of the house while abiding by social distancing. And how COVID-19 is complicating Colorado politics. Next. Seeing people working from home, learning from home, dancing from home. Today I've noticed that a few of you are drinking from home responsibly, responsibly. Some virtual happy hours being organized for St. Patrick's Day. We got invited out, so to speak, by some folks in Arvada who got together via video chat right at five o'clock, drink in hand. And everybody chipped in on Venmo. They were trying to raise a little money for one of their favorite local restaurants, Jack's Bar and Grill, because it's forced to close to dining in. Can you speak?
speaking of enjoying beverages, that beverage may need to be warm on Thursday. We've got a pretty good March storm taking aim at Colorado. Today, high clouds after the fog burned off with enough sunshine. We came close to 60 degrees in the city. And with those high clouds coming in and a wind shift out of the southwest, will remain very mild tonight and dry. Another nice day tomorrow, but it all changes tomorrow night. Uh, concerns for blizzard conditions up in Wyoming and Nebraska. Denver goes under a winter storm watch on Thursday for about three to seven inches of snow. The worst of it will be the wind, and that's why there are blizzard warnings that will go out through Friday morning for areas like Cheyenne and Scotts Bluff. The wind may also be an issue across the Continental Divide and Western Slope, where winter weather advisories are posted. Tonight, we're dry, a few clouds drifting in. Tomorrow afternoon, we see rain and snow developing west of the Continental Divide. A mild day, close to 70 for some areas tomorrow. Tomorrow night, we get rain. It is overnight tomorrow night into Thursday that that rain changes to snow, and right now it's looking like three to seven inches of snow. The heaviest will be west and south, all winding down by Friday morning. Partly cloudy, dry 35 tonight with less wind. Tomorrow sunshine and 64 degrees in the city. Rain showers tomorrow night, all snow on Thursday, the start of spring no less. Clearing out, but cold Friday, a warming trend heading into the upcoming weekend with temperatures back close to 60 degrees on Tuesday. Of course, uh, always a great time to check out the Nine News weather app panel if you haven't done that. Thank you, Kathy. Deadlines to run for political office don't just stop because of a pandemic, and today was the deadline to turn in signatures to qualify for the primary ballot. Democratic Senate candidate Lorena Garcia said she turned in 13,000 signatures to qualify for that U.S. Senate primary. It's an impressive number of signatures, but she needs a bit more than 10,000. So that could be a tough squeeze once you take into account any duplicates or errors or other invalid signatures. I would have liked to have turned in a lot more but the circumstances that we were faced with the coronavirus and the state not doing anything to support petitioning candidates, I'm pretty darn impressed that we submitted what we did. She said that if she didn't have enough valid signatures, she would consider going to court and asking a judge to put her on the ballot anyway. That is what another candidate with far fewer signatures said that she would be doing. Uh, Michelle Ferrino Warren said she turned in 9,000 signatures today, fewer than required. So typically that would be an absolute non-starter for getting on the ballot. But in an email, she said that she would petition a court to let her on the ballot due to unforeseen barriers. She's also suggesting that there might be another week of signature collection once the state of emergency has passed. Another Democrat in that Senate race, Andrew Romanoff, is trying to qualify through the state assembly process, not with signatures. He tweeted that it would be unfair to penalize candidates who did try to collect signatures. Former Governor John Hickenlooper, another Democrat in that race. There's less of them than there were before, but there's still a ton. He also collected signatures, turned them in last month, found out yesterday he had plenty. He's officially on the June 30th primary ballot. Coronavirus caused the cancellation of almost all large gatherings. It's not stopping a neighborhood in Aurora from celebrating St. Patrick's Day. I think there's a lot of kids home from school right now, right? And just a few days in or getting a little bit of cabin fever. Get the kids outside next.
I'd take a few minutes of that every night. That was that was kind of nice. So last night you gave us this whole stack of suggestions on what you would like to see on next as we kind of hunker down together for some tough weeks ahead. A number of you specifically asked for smiles. Our Corky Scholl grabbed his camera and followed one of your messages to the hashtag Hey Next and found plenty of them in Aurora. I see flowers and a little shamrock. I think there's a lot of kids home from school right now, right? And just a few days in are getting a little bit of cabin fever. So we're going to try and get out and do something just a little bit fun. We're doing a shamrock hunt, so I have to look for shamrocks. Today we're hunting for shamrocks. We've asked our neighbors to get creative. So they've painted, they've colored, they've cut them out, put them in a window facing the street so all of our neighbors can get it out young and old and kind of get some fresh air and just kind of get out and about in the neighborhood. Daddy, daddy. There's some, we found some. So I think with everything that's going on right now, it's doing us good to get out and get a little fresh air. We're trying to keep our distance, right? Trying to stay in the house. I see another one. You know, normally we would probably go out in big groups of folks and kind of, you know, get to know each other a little bit better. But this way we can at least wave across the street if we need to. Dada, how much do we have? 